And when she catches you in the act, mop in hand, it's as good as her flipping through a playgirl or whatever gets the engine started. <laughs> Mopping the floor is as good as her looking at a high value alpha Chad. Did you just hear that? He's comparing mopping the floor to being a studly Chad that's in a Playgirl magazine. Got a crazy video for you today. She's not yours, it's just your turn. A woman should be a compliment to your life, not the focus. Do the work. Women do not care about your struggles. They hang out at the finish line and they pick the winners. All right, what's up my brothers? In this video, we're gonna be reacting or reviewing a uh, video series from Darren Hardy on how to be a better man. And the subtitle is presented by a man after consulting with lots of women. Now, I came across this because somebody emailed this to me and they said that they were disgusted with Darren Hardy and emailed him his disappointment. And I haven't interacted with his material much lately, I'll be honest. I had a copy of his compounding effect audio series, I think um, in the hard drive of my M3, it was a 2009 model. So that was well over 10 years ago. Uh, his, his content in the business sphere, I think is good. One of my best friends is actually very close friends with this guy uh, personally. So um, I am aware of his work and what he's done in the past. I think he completely misses the boat here and what he's doing with his uh, series, uh, which happens to be a free series. And it's again called How to Be a Better Man. As you can see up over here, um, it's, it's broken down into three parts. So part one is community where he's basically He's giving you the rundown of how men are disposable and 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 how um, you know you kind of have to throw yourself under the bus sometimes for society and for women. Fine, we're going to skip over that. I wanted to go to the home part, how to be a better man in the home and around women in the house. Uh, I'm also going to skip over the office part because that's mostly strictly business related stuff, not so much to the sexual marketplace. But I think you guys are really going to find this very very interesting. In fact, um, because it it really illustrates in a very clear and concise way, uh, why certain people should stay in a specific lane and not kind of deviate into stuff that they don't have the full awareness around. Again, he's collecting all this data from women. And in case you're wondering um, what they look like, stay to the end and I'll show you a picture of his team just so you can see what the source of this information was. But I'm gonna play through it and uh, do some edits before I put out the final copy, but here we go. So let me share with you the consensus of what they want. I think some of these what answers that want. came from the women that I surveyed will surprise you. They certainly did me. And I think some of these answers you're not gonna like. I certainly didn't. In fact, the most dominant and consistent answer is the opposite of how I have been trying to orchestrate my life. And I'll admit, I'm still grappling with how to handle this. This answer is probably best given by my 94 year old grandmother. I asked her a whole series of questions about what she was initially looking for in her ideal husband. So his, so his go-to source is his 94 year old grandmother. So let's start with her. And then what attracted her to my grandfather? And when did she know that she was in love with him? By the way, um, this man's grandfather was a World War II fighter pilot. So his job was to fly around in a propeller plane shooting down the bad guys. So let's hear what his grandmother had to say about the grandfather and what she wanted. And more. They were married for 67 years. It's a long time. It would have been more, but my grandfather passed seven years ago. There's not a time when I talk to my grandmother when she doesn't say, I miss your grandfather, and then recall some loving memory. I asked her, Grams, when did you feel most loved by your husband? Here we Was go. it words of affirmation, quality time, touch, or intimacy? Was it by the way, the stuff he's talking about right now is um, like the love language narrative. I'm going to do a video dedicated to this topic because it's it's another piece that really sends guys in the wrong wrong direction. Um, I'm going to skip over that with this particular cast, but just listen up here to what he has to say. Was it the gifts that he gave you or flowers or compliments? She interrupted me and said flatly when he was mopping my floors. All right. Let's pause for a second. When he was mopping my floors. All right, I did a survey here and um, this was a few days ago. We got 7,100 results. Let me throw it up on the screen for you. The question was women only, when is your man most sexy, attractive and desirable to you? Men, if you wanna see the results, click an option, then unselect it. So if you ever see these surveys, do not take them if it's specifically for one gender. If you wanna see the results, you can click and then just unclick it and then your vote goes away. So number one was when he has a mop in his hand, cleaning the floors in the house, that was 11%. Now 
my female audience is between the age of about 24 and 35, I think, is what the main category is. And after that, it's about 35 to 45. Very, uh, very few are under the age or over the age. So that's going to be the bulk of it. And about one in 10 of my viewers are women, just so you get the idea. That's why you don't see too many votes in this. But I think 7,100 is plenty. So having a mop in his hand and cleaning the floors ranked at 11%. Uh, the second highest one was, or sorry, at the very bottom was when he's looking after the kids, which is 6%. So women don't want guys that are basically taking on traditionally feminine roles in the household. Um, that's not important to them. Uh, mopping the floors clearly at number two is the, the second least important thing to them. Uh, number three was when I see others admire him for being on his purpose. We're getting a little warmer now. You see where we're going here? Uh, the fourth one is when he's doing traditionally masculine things like fixing or building. Again, uh, another improvement in the direction that I talk about. And the last one was when other men want to be him and other women desire him. That was almost half of the votes were cast when women feel most attracted to a man or see him as most sexy, attractive, desirable when he's on his purpose, when he's putting a dent in the universe and basically other guys want to be that guy and other women desire him and his attention, of course. So let's move on. Okay, so let's continue with when Graham says he was mopping the floors. What? I said, my grandmother can be very witty, so I assumed she was joking. She wasn't, not even a little bit. She said, that is when I knew he cared about me, about our home and about our family and was being a man and pitching in. So skip over the fact that this guy was a badass in the war, shooting down bad guys. Skip over the facts that, that he provided a house and father children. Skip over the fact that he was the protector and the provider in the household. She's saying, and this is why you can't listen to what women say when it comes to advice on the sexual marketplace or what they're actually attracted to. You always have to watch their behavior. Um, she's saying that a mop in the hand was what she wanted the most or would turn her on the most. Still unsatisfied with this answer, I continued to question, but what does Good. mopping floors have to do with love and intimacy and being a heroic man? Everything, she said flatly. Here we go. And began to explain. She said, running a household is a lot of work. It's unglamorous and it's tedious work that never ends. It's work no one likes to do. It's uncelebrated and it's taken for granted. There are no applause for a clean toilet or fresh sheets on the bed. And all of it falls on mama's shoulders. Your grandfather, she continued, was never sexier than when he had a mop in his hand and was scrubbing my floors. Bullshit. Did you guys see the survey that I just took? These are the words of a postmenopausal, well past postmenopausal, 94 year old woman who's completely forgotten about arousal, attraction, desire, and the main things that are that are the drivers in a relationship. And she's telling her grandson, you should mop the floors in the house. This is what will get you the girls. This is what will keep you the girls is mopping the floors in the house. This completely invalidates all advice that, it, that this guy's grandmother gave. In fact, anything that's remotely associated with something that's tied into chore play is something that you have to discard. The whole coining of the of the chore play phrase basically is you're exchanging chores in return for intimacy. Could be love, could be sexual intimacy, could be any number of things. But that's what they're that's what they're trying to sell you guys here with this course. This is a free course that's encouraging you to pick up mops, empty the dishwasher, uh, do all those chores around the house, fold laundry, all that stuff. And guess what, guys? That doesn't work. That is the par the process of betatization through a thousand concessions. You're being sold the process of betatization through a thousand concessions. And this is what ends most guys in divorce court and what causes about 80% of women, because divorces we know are initiated primarily by women. It's about eight out of 10 times. This is what is leading up to something like this. And any guy that's been through the divorce grinder that looks back on when his woman was actually aroused and attracted to him versus when she wasn't knows full well. And you, I want to hear your comments below guys, you know, spill the beans knows full well that women are not attracted to you when you're doing chore play and you're not getting genuine, enthusiastic desire from her. It's more or less negotiated compliance, which nobody wants because it always leads to resentment. That's when I knew he cared. That's when I knew he got it and he understood me. He was jumping in to help. He could see that the boat was taken on water and he jumped in to start bailing with me. He never needed to say anything. It was the most affectionate thing he could ever say or do. What?
Here I have been buying these expensive yeah, gifts, you're using all everybody. these damn hair products and expensive face creams, working out to keep in shape, trying different cuts of underwear for different occasions, and it's a mop? That's sexy? This was not the answer I was expecting or wanted. Because it doesn't and work, this dude. this wasn't only my grandmother's point of view. It was the answer that came up most consistently Let's amongst all the women that I surveyed. Now, the other women that he surveyed, by the way, and I can't play the whole thing because it's so long. I mean, the entire thing, this is a, this is a real pain for me to jot down that, the points. But the, the origin of the survey was his grandmother and the female employees that work for him, which actually here, I'll put it up on the screen so you can get an idea of who it is that he's talking about on the source of this information. All right, so here up on the screen, we've got his uh, female team. Let's see if we can get this a little bit bigger for you guys so you can get uh, a visual. But there you go. This is this is the source of, of his information. These are not, uh, looks like most of these women here, I see gray, definitely 40s, 40, 40, 40. She looks like she's in her 30s, 40s, probably 40, maybe 30s. This bigger one is probably early 30s. And this looks like early 30s, 40s. Most of these women are basically, well, they're definitely post epiphany phase. And if you're not familiar, the epiphany phase is anywhere between 27 and 29, 30 or so. And that's where women want to uh, basically, uh, you know, lock down the good guy and, you know, get all shacked up and, and pop out their babies. It's usually by that time after the party years that they hit the epiphany. Women at this age, are at a totally different phase of, of, of life that most men are attracted to. Most men, generally speaking, if you interview them, would tell you that they're most attracted to women that are in their early 20s, okay? That, that to them is the most attractive level. So um, by, by catering to, one, the lyrics of women that they're generally not as attracted to, and two, that are all in LTRs or marriages, uh, that are looking for more access to things getting done around the house. This is why the narrative now now turns into pick up a mop and mop the floors from women that most guys would not want to be with. And secondly, they're they're not given advice that's relevant to the type of women that they want to be with that they find attractive. This is this is why I break these things down for you guys. You always have to consider the source. Whenever you get information, I always want you guys to challenge this, the, the, the validity and how it might serve you by questioning the source. What is the source? Would I want to exchange places with somebody you know, that might be married to one of these people over here? Ask yourself those questions. Always consider the source, right? So let's, so let's carry on and go back to the video. Old and young, spanning five generations, married or just dating heterosexual or not, kids or no kids, the same freaking answer. And it can be the small things even. Allison, who has been with Kevin for four years, said this. These are again the all of his employees. daily things, making my tea for me in the morning, delivering me breakfast and or lunch while I'm working, folding the laundry, you name it, just help me out. Have, have you guys ever been you know, rewarded with enthusiastic, genuine desire and intimacy from a woman by folding the laundry? Does it work? Because from what I've come across, nope, that's chore play. That doesn't work. She said, Victoria, who is a millennial, 24 years old, who's been with her boyfriend, Kevin, for five years, responded to the when she feels love question the same. When he surprises me by bringing me food when I'm working, girl loves to eat. She so we've got a 24 year old that's chasing the corporate ladder that wants her boyfriend to bring her food. You're starting to notice a trend here when it comes to the toxic feminist agenda where they're trying to convince women to be men. And all they end up being is horrible women, you know, at the end of the day. She says, Megan, mom of two rambunctious boys, ages five and two, has been married to Aaron for six years. She said, when he goes out of his way to serve, whether small or big, He's a talker, loves words of affirmation, but he's slowly learning that doesn't fly with me. So I feel most loved anytime he does something for me. Whether The trend here is that we're moving more towards the beta buck side of the equation. Um, you have men that women look at as alpha seed and on the other end of the equation, the beta need side. All of these women are in long-term relationships or married and they're talking or they're citing reasons of their arousal or their excitement or their interest in, in men about how to be a better man by basically bending over backwards, going through the process of betatization by a thousand concessions, and then putting themselves in, into a place where they ultimately don't look that attractive to their female partner. This is, this is not good advice. This is horrible advice. This guy should definitely stick to the business stuff that he knows about. Um, you should never ask a... I mean, you would never ask a fish how to catch it. You ask a fisherman how to catch it. 
relying on the advice of, of women for something like this, it's not it's not going to be useful. And I feel bad for the guys that are going to watch this because it's going to get a lot of reach. He's a very good marketer and he has a very big audience. So it is going to get served to a lot of guys. And you're going to see a lot of guys go home and thinking that folding the laundry and grabbing a mop and doing all these things is going to get him uh, rewarded with lots of intimacy of the extravagant kind that they're always looking for. And nothing further from the truth. Um, you know, is lying within all these words, unfortunately. It's taking out the trash or getting my oil changed or taking care of both boys so that I can have a few hours to the day to my. You saw the other part of the survey where, you know, where I mentioned taking care of the kids. That was the lowest response, you know, taking care of the boys while I go out and do something. That doesn't turn women on. That's not something that gets them excited to be with you. You're basically beta bucks for them at that point in time. You're going through the process again of betatization through a thousand concessions. I'm not saying don't be a father and don't get any, you know, don't engage with your children or anything like that. What I'm saying is that doesn't turn women on. I mean, you should do that for yourself because you want to have a relationship with them. Myself, that is what I need. So helping out acts of service wins me over every time. Kylie, who is our A-team culture queen, married three years to Eric, has a one-year-old son, the ginger-haired Ledger, and another boy, Rylan, on the way. She had the exact same answer. She wrote, right now my life is very busy, so I feel like my love language might have shifted in Again, the past year or so language. from words of affirmation to acts of service. Helping me get something done or taking care of something around the house or with Ledger is really appreciated now. He can tell me words of affirmation down the road when I don't have as much going on. Ha ha, she says. Now, man. Let me add the exclamation point that Maggie put on her answer. And I think this is a key point, one we can seem to not get through our thick Neanderthal heads. So let me just- See, he's, he's disparaging men in this, calling us thick Neanderthals. Now, I understand that it's tongue in cheek, like he's trying to be comical with it, but you should never allow yourself to be disparaged and you should never disparage yourself as a man. And the third thing is, we've got very little Neanderthal DNA out there. We're homo sapiens, okay? Uh, Neanderthal DNA, I think it counts for something less than two or 3% of all DNA out there. They were wiped out a long time ago. So the way that he's talking about men and masculinity and disparaging it, he's coming from it from the total wrong angle. Then it really comes down to this. Pitch in without having to be asked and don't complain about it. <laughs> and, I, and I do have to be frank here. Before I did this project, when my wife told me these things, as all wives have told their husbands these things for many millennia, it just sounded like a nag. I didn't see any purpose in it. I've always had this divide and conquer mentality. You take care of the inside, I'll go out and slay the dragons on the outside, or however y'all have divided it up. When I was still asked to wipe this or sweep that, I would problem solve this by saying, hey, how about this? I'll slay an extra dragon or two out there, and then, pay someone to do all the stuff you want me to do. And being gallant, I'd add, I don't want you to do it either. There's no need. So what's interesting here is his default, original, natural intent is the right one. It's let's have our specific roles. I'm going to go out and, uh, you know, catch the uh, bacon and I'm going to bring it home and you're going to cook it up sort of thing. Um, that's typically what women want. They want to look up to a giant that has the capacity to do things like that, put a dent in the universe and be on their purpose. They're attracted to that. That's what they want. But what women don't understand about their own innate nature, which confuses men and confuses women too, they don't seem to understand it even when I talk about it, is they actually unknowingly put men through the process of betatization by a thousand concessions, by doing things like this, by trying to distract him from his purpose. Um, there's an old saying that women are dream killers, and it's not like they intently or maliciously try to ruin your lives or to destroy your dreams, but they're, they're innately designed to do all these things, to put you through betatization through a thousand concessions, to kind of shit test you over and over again, to, to really test to see if your frame is a strong dominant frame in the relationship. And this guy is now telling the world or anybody that watches this, you know, at the very least anyway, um, that you need to stop chasing your purpose and come home, pick up the mop and mop the floors and fold the laundry because that's what you need to do to be a better man. 
and he's sending guys in the complete wrong direction. What got him to be this successful this far into his life at this point in his relationship and make the multi-millions of dollars that he's made is because he's been on his purpose, because he's chased excellence, because he's put all of that ahead of nonsense like mopping the floors. And now he's telling guys, you know what? Mop the floors. You know what? Fold the laundry. Wash the car. Go get the groceries. Go be a servitude little beta is what he's saying. And that's not what works. That's not what work. That's not what women want at the end of the day. If you're ever confused about what women want, watch how they make choices in life and what arouses them versus what they say. If there's a conflict, which there almost always is, watch the choices, watch the behavior. I need for you to be scrubbing toilets or power washing the backyard either. Let's just hire it out, I would say proudly. But that never has gone over with well with my wife. And I never understood it. I don't know if it's because she grew up with immigrant parents who had backbones that were forged with iron or, or what. I mean, she watched them do everything. Work, clean, garden. Her mother even handmade their clothes that they wore for seven children. Whether it was that or, or if, as she tells me, she just doesn't like other people all up in her nest. And she adds that I should want to help out anyway. I didn't understand. That's a feminist narrative. Done, I would make sure of it, just not by me. What difference does it make? Still not getting it. I think. Okay, guys, this is why you don't argue with women. They're not going to understand. They're not going to let things like logic and reason get in the way of their emotions and some narrative that they've got brainwashing them, you know, like toxic feminism, for example. Men and women are equal, blank slate equalism. If a woman does it, man should do it, blah, 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 blah. You have to stay focused on your purpose. You cannot get derailed or, fo or, 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 or thrown off course. This is not good advice again. Maybe she just likes inflicting pain on me, that she enjoys seeing me tortured. She doesn't she like it. She's not doing it intentionally. She's to do something that she knows it's I absolutely just hardwired into them. to do and would even pay good money not to do it. By the way, you can see how lame a man's brain can be. Again, this is the second time now that he's disparaged men. This is how lame a man's brain can be. You know what? If it wasn't for men's brains, you wouldn't have flushing toilets, electricity, roads, airplanes. None of these things would probably exist. Okay. Men's brains are not lame. They're wonderful things and they get stuff done. And women are attracted to men that can put a dent in the universe and are on a purpose. This guy here is telling you, you know what? Your brain is so lame. Go mop the floor. Go do it now. Be, be a better man and go mop the floor. Get the hell out of here. But it's only now after getting this same answer, not just from my wife, but from a whole spectrum of women, contemporary women, all the way up to my grandmother born in the 1920s and married to the same man, a World War II fighter pilot for what would have been three quarters of a century that I now think I see. They all want the same thing. They want their man to step in and help personally be involved in helping make the nest better help maintain the nest and the little chickies in it. It's not the work. It's what the act signifies. It's what it shows her that you care, that you get her, that you love her, and that you are there for her and for her chicks. And when she catches you in the act, mop in hand, it's as good as her flipping through a playgirl or whatever gets the engine started. <laughs> Mopping the floor is as good as her looking at a high value alpha Chad. Did you just hear that? He's comparing mopping the floor to being a studly Chad that's in a Playgirl magazine. Give me a break. I mean, the, I mean, do you guys buy any of this crap? There you have it. Okay, now that was the that was the big one, or at least the most consistent and unexpected and candidly the answer I dislike the most. But I think I got it. I, I think I finally got it, and I hope that you do too. Why why is it that the best selling book of all time is Fifty Shades of Grey? Is it, is it a book about men mopping floors and folding laundry and getting groceries from Whole Foods? No, not as far as I'm aware. I've seen the movie. I haven't read the book, but I've seen the movie. It's got nothing to do with that. That's not what women. That's not what turns women on. Again, when there's a conflict between her words, like what's going on over here, and their choices, what made a best selling book? Watch the choices. I'm sure your wife hopes that you do too, as well. If she's sitting next to you, she's probably elbowed you a few times by now. So let me touch on a few of the other findings from what they said. These are a few of the other areas they said we could be better. These are the three most dominant answers to the question. Oh, you could tell him three <laughs> ways that he could be a better man for you, your family, to others, and for himself. What would you suggest? The number one answer was, one, to believe in himself more, to be more confident. So 
the number one reason that they've listed here is to believe in himself more and to be more confident. What they're looking for is a guy that is confident, has an aura of arrogance around him, that has the ability to do things that men will admire and want to be and women want to be with. This is what drives the entire process of arousal, attraction, and desire between the sexes. Man up point number one is basically be on your purpose. You know, when you translate womanese, this guy doesn't know how to translate womanese. He's just like, well, just be more confident, guys. Be more confident. That's all you got to do. To be the man she knows you are and can Not a man mopping a floor. expectation of your potential. Men, she sees you. She sees you probably better than you see yourself. She has an objective view. She's not caught up in your head and caught up by all your programmed inhibitions. She sees what you really are made of and really capable of. And when you don't meet those capabilities, it's disappointing, but not in the way that you think. She's not disappointed in you. Let's be clear about that. She's disappointed in the fact that you don't see what she sees and don't know what she knows about you. This is how one wife put it, quote, if he only had as much belief in himself as I have in him, he'd be 10 times the man he is now. And that would just be scratching. So this wife's comment about her husband states, if he only had as much belief in himself as I had him, he'd be 10 times man. She wants this guy that she's married to, to be 10 times greater than what he is. Does, he, does a guy have the capacity to become 10 times greater than what he is if he's mopping floors and folding laundry? If he has the financial resources to hire a cleaning lady to go and do those things, that frees up his time to go and do that so he can level himself up and go put his dent in the universe. You have to understand these things, guys. When you listen to women or you listen to terrible advice from blue pill betas telling you what to do to have better relationships or to get better results in life, this is often what they default to, which is this kind of nonsense, which does not serve you the surface she said when you step into your greatness you your better more assertive self and you confidently push forward to achieve what you want in life your wife will find you irresistibly attractive your children will look up to you and men will respect you as we talked about i don't know about you guys but i never looked up to my dad if he was mopping the floor or cooking i think i looked up to him the most when he was doing something masculine and alpha like I don't know, uh, finishing the basement or, or making a go-kart for me when I was like, you know, a seven or eight year old, uh, showing me how to, you know, make a bow and arrow out of random stuff we found in the forest behind my house. That's when I looked up to him. I never looked up to him when he was mopping the floor. A man's unique contribution, our purpose of existence is protection, provision, and leadership. The A number one attribute of leadership is confidence. She needs your unwavering confidence so she can feel secure in your leadership. When the leader is not confident, the followers are fearful. Men, your wife, your children, your neighborhood, your community needs your confidence. They need to believe in and feel safe in your leadership. As Megan answered the question, when did you know that you were in love with him? She said, the first time I danced with him, he knew how to lead. What did I say earlier? Women want to be with the giant that know how to lead. They want to enter his frame. Right. This is this is one of the truthful things that we've heard today. Yep. That's the key. It's right there. It's on the job description. Protection, provisions, and leadership. Here's number two. Okay. This is the next area where we need to step up. And it's in the area of romance. I bet you knew that one was gonna make the not doing so good enough list, didn't you? Look, here's the good news. They're not asking for a Ryan Gosling from the notebook kind of romance. Oh, except that's exactly what Megan wrote down that she wanted, but she was being funny. She said simply, hey, just surprise me sometimes. Step up your game a tad. She added, if he wrote me a love letter, I think I might die of shock. I know without a... If he wrote me a love letter, if he wrote me a poem, if he, you know, if he brought me flowers more often, well, the, these, are, these are none of the things that we know women respond to. Again, you always got to look at what women respond to. When you take a look at how women, you know, break rules for men that they deem as alpha, but they make them more for beta, you'll notice a lot of the conversation that you have coming on here is, I have to have this and I'd like that and I want more of this and I want you to do that. All of these things lead again to negotiated desire, which ends in resentment and obligated compliance and nobody wants that. What you need to do is step up your game, put yourself first as a man, mental point of origin, be on your purpose, 
chase excellence, not women, put a dent in the universe. That's what you have to worry about. Yeah, you know, if she's been a good girl and she supported your purpose and helped you along the way, reward her with that. Of course, you know, take her on a trip, buy her flowers or something like that every once in a while. But for the most part, a lot of this, you know, stuff like this, about, you know, Megan on Aaron or somebody on this, yeah, they do want the Ryan Gosling guy at the end of the day, but they definitely didn't marry him. So they're trying to, in their head, rationalize and justify things by making him jump through more hoops which is again, part of the betatization through a thousand concessions process. I doubt that he loves me, but come on, sweep me off my feet every once in a while. I'm washing your underwear after all. Her mom had the same simple suggestion to her father. She said, he could be a little more romantic. I give hints sometimes for Christmas gifts or birthday gifts, but he doesn't get it. It would be nice if he just picked up on the hints, quote unquote. Heck, that's not so tough guys, is it? Here's an added tip. The next one is, on the list was touch. She wants to be touched more, but not in the kind of touch you're thinking. I, and that is probably part of the problem as well. I like how Allison put it. She said, being held with purpose, long hugs, an arm around the shoulder, or a hand through my hair makes me feel loved. Or as Robin said about John, when he puts his arms around me, even without me asking, because he knows I need it, that's when I feel loved. And then there is expression. Apparently we aren't expressing ourselves enough, go figure. Comments like, I want him to let me know that he is attracted to me. Tell me I am beautiful. Reassure me that you love me unconditionally. Or as Kylie stated, I love when Eric tells me I am a great wife and mom and that we are the best parts of, of his life. She said, it's making me tear up just thinking about it right now, actually. Now, we know you love your wife and your family, but she still needs to hear it. And not once, often. And forever, you cannot go to the altar and say, I love you. And if that changes, I'll let you know and call it done. Just like you have to keep filling the tank of your car with fuel, you gotta keep filling the love tank of your relationship with your words. And yes, even if you don't like it, and even if it's hard for you, you still gotta do it like Irma does. Carla wrote, she hates writing, so her birthday, anniversary, flower card, notes to me are the sweetest thing because I know it took her a long while to spell check the crap out of every word because she knows that I'll know. I just want to point out that this, he's, he's talking about a lesbian relationship here, Carla about Irma, and, and he's defining that love is related to the cards that she writes to her wife um, because they're always beautifully written and spell check. What does that have to do with the attraction and desire between men and women? Okay, this is a totally different dynamic. I'm actually surprised that this ended up in here. This is, this is kind of ridiculous, to be honest with you. Notice every typo but they're always beautifully written and thoughtful no matter what. So we just need to man up and just do what needs to be done. Man up, like guys. Not, good at it or not. All credit is earned in trying, <laughs> but trying earnestly. And then three, the last area of improvement is time. Wives, just like kids, spell love, not L-O-V-E, but rather- When he's talking about time, he's talking about attention. And we know that women love the attention of a guy. This is accurate. Uh, the fully present and available part, all of that, you know, translated from womanese to what men would understand is giving her your undivided attention. That's what she's looking for with this component. Rather, T-I-M-E. And not just time occupying the same space. It is time that you are fully present and available to her. Women want to know that they are a priority. And time, fully present and focused on them and the family, yes. is evidence of that priority. Don't be like this guy whose wife wrote, I wish he was more involved in his life and stepped away from his desk more. Oh, wait, that was from my wife. So as you can see, I'm still working all the, on all this stuff right along with you. All right, guys. So with that being said, I think I can wrap up on this and um, just kind of sum it up like this. Um, this is not all bad, okay? There's some stuff in there that might be useful, but going through it all, if I were to sum up, the good points minus the bad points and the balance of probabilities, it's mostly going to beta ties more men than not. You have to always consider the source of your information. You always have to ask yourself, does this actually work? You know, versus, um, you know, one of the things that I talk about is, is, is comforting lies versus the uncomfortable truth. A lot of what he's packaging here is comforting lies. It's a free course, comforting men and placating to a female first primary social order. The female first primary social order, by the way, is the first chapter in my book. Uh, you will understand it more. I don't have time to define it here, but you've got to you've got to get it through your head that 
this narrative is not designed to serve you as a man. It does not serve the relationship in any way whatsoever. All that it does is it puts men through this uh, meat grinder of the betatization through a thousand concessions. It usually starts with, I love you. And then it turns into, hey, Rich, don't brush your teeth over there. You're going to get toothpaste on the floor. Uh, and then it goes to, let's go vegan together. And then it turns into, uh, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Uh, let's get a divorce. I'm taking the kids to my mom's you know, this weekend. If you want to maintain the frame in the relationship, there's lots of great videos on my channel. Browse through it. Do some, do some research for yourself. Check out the uh, playlist on Monday night that covers before the train wreck. And definitely grab a copy of my book, The Unplugged Alpha, and unplug from these comforting lies so that you can recognize the uncomfortable truth. That'll be pinned below in the description. If you want to get more information about joining me in my men's community, booking me for coaching or anything like that. That's also pinned below. Let me know what you think. You know, are you a follower of Darren Hardy? What do you think of this advice? Um, you can just Google it if you want to go and uh, hop on this list and learn more about it. Uh, but it's called the Better Man Training. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later. Peace out.